What's up guys? Adam Elsted here coming to you from the beautiful state of Pennsylvania. Welcome back to the channel here on Straight Yacked. Uh, it's kind of gloomy though here in Pennsylvania right now. This is uh, early April and it has been monsoon weather here for like the last like, I don't know, three or four days and we got flooding everywhere. I'm getting out of this state. I'm heading to North Carolina. I'm fishing the Hobie Bass Open at Lake Norman in North Carolina. I'm super excited to be fishing my first Hobie Bass Open this year. Now, for those who do know, um, Hobie Bass Open did adopt the ability to use motors in a tournament, which is great. But unfortunately, they got two events this year where they're not allowed to use motors. And of course, Lake Norman happens to be one of them. I got to do this tournament. It's only six hours away. And I'm kind of excited because it'll be a spotted bass tournament. We'll see what we can do. Anyways, the kayak, the native 13.5 Titan is loaded up and ready to go. We're ready to head down the road, get out of this nasty weather. Hopefully we've got some good weather down there and hopefully we get a hold of some really nice spot of bass. Anyways, guys, like I've always said before, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button up below there or down below up there but down below hit that little bell thingy too that lets you know when i uh post a new video but we're gonna get into this we're gonna go fish lake norman in north carolina for the hobie bass open here on straight yacht my name is adam milstead and i'm a former usc fighter turned extreme kayak angler i travel around the country fishing bass tournaments out of kayak so if you like kayaking, and you like fishing, then welcome to Straight Yak. guys so we just made it down here um, and it's still daytime which is actually quite odd you know normally I'm I'm driving in the dark and I like driving in the daytime way better so we just got to a launch here now I'm a little worried because this is a state park and uh, they close the gates right around eight o'clock so it's seven o'clock now and so I wanted to come here to see if maybe this was out of the wind in case there was a windy situation, which it is today. There's supposedly, like out in the main lake, it's about the 30 mile per hour winds. And so what we wanna to try to do is at least, if I'm gonna do anything, is I want to see what the wind's like at this particular launch, okay? So, as you can see behind me, beautiful lake already. Like, you know, first spot, it's nice. Um, not a lot of docks here, but it is what it is. Um, the wind is, is definitely blowing. Seems like it's like a north wind, which generally means we're going to have a low pressure system. And sure enough, we got one coming in uh, for this whole weekend. So anyways, um, what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to roll on the bank. I'm not going to put my kayak in. I was going to put my kayak in and try to roll around and stuff, but I might just just see if I can fish from the bank somewhere. If I catch a fish, I'll take it as a sign that maybe I should come out here and fish here tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. All right, we're gonna go throw a line in the water and then probably just go back to the Airbnb. All right. <laughs> All right, so I came down here just real quick. I threw a chatterbait in. I got my first, first uh, bass of the week. <laughs> pretty cool look, look at all that rock right there came right off the rock hit the evo the evo chatterbait with a uh that's a strike king blade minnow on the back of that thing yeah look at that guy it's my first i think this is actually my first spot um i don't catch a lot of spots but came in and just yeah 
just call one. Maybe that's a sign. I ho <laughs> hopefully it's a good sign. All right, we're gonna let this guy go. Look at him. Be spot. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Good. You doing all right? Yes, sir. Are you like running ragged from all these stuff opening? Staying busy, but not All right, guys. First launch here at Lake Norman. Um, the wind is already starting to pick up, and this time of the year, you know, the wind is always a factor against the old kayak so I don't know hopefully it stays away we're gonna look for docks we're gonna look for shallow water we're gonna look for largemouth in a spotted bass territory but regardless I don't know we're still gonna go out there and have a good time I only got the back camera rolling and so far it's working so <laughs> I can't promise you that it's gonna work the whole day we'll see what happens but we're gonna go ahead and launch First day here at Lake Norman, uh, pre-fishing. All right, let's go. guys I am back at the launch uh, wow the Sun wants to come out finally I'm quite pissed off because about darn near flipped coming back three foot four foot swells I knew it was gonna be horrible I knew I shouldn't have gone as far as I did but I did I am just soaked to the bone I am so angry like all this water sitting in the kayak was all in the back I mean I'm not kidding you water was like right here about to come over because I had so much water sitting in the back because the waves would crash over the bow of the boat and just funnel right in that sucked I am drenched because I had to get out and basically walk the kayak. 
Yeah. Drenched. Here's my boot. All right. Figured I'd drink. That's how pre fishing's gone. This is good. I like it. Hazy, hearted, IPA. It's a good beer. All right, guys. This is day two. We're heading out of Lake Norman. Very beautiful today. Not sure what the weather is gonna do. I'm just tired of looking at the apps and it being completely wrong. So um, I've got the Native Titan loaded up. We're gonna get out here. We're gonna try a different spot. There isn't many launches in this tournament, which makes things very, very difficult. And it being a no motor tournament, we're going to be very limited. So, um, again, just going to go out here and throw the same thing I threw yesterday. Probably just like a jackhammer and, you know, try a couple different odds and ends things. I got some big swim baits. I might tie one on. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, you guys aren't going to come with me on this pre-fishing trip. I might bring my phone so you guys can see uh, what I'm doing, you know, or what I catch. But my... Uh, yeah, that popped off yesterday and I still got to put that on. That's where the back camera went. So anyways, it wouldn't be a fishing tournament. Wouldn't be a big fishing tournament if there wasn't problems. Let's go fishing. All right guys, so first fish of the day is a 14 inch spot. Caught on a jackhammer. Um, pretty cool water around here. It's Looking at about 58 degrees. So yeah, definitely definitely a little colder back here. But we're gonna keep working. That was uh, again caught off a jackhammer. So uh, green pumpkin. Let's keep rolling. Alright, here's another one here. A little too far in between the other one, but uh, it's about an hour later. Get a hold of that guy. He's about a 15, 75, almost a 16 inch fish, but man, is he beautiful. I'm gonna take a selfie of him. All right, guys, you wanna see what they're eating? Yeah. Blueback herring. He was just sitting on the surface there. I don't know if somebody tagged him or what, but That's a blue back herring. You see why? That is bass gold if I've ever seen anything. Blue back herring. All right, guys, it's about 12 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> I am back. And uh, this is obviously not a good spot either. So, looks like we're going to be dealing with up north well i guess as northern as you can get on this lake and uh yeah we're just gonna try our best at it we've got the board check in the night uh that's roughly around five o'clock and then we're gonna probably just grab something to eat and then prepare for tomorrow i did do a couple of um sort of maintenance checks on this thing you know <clears throat> i don't use this a whole lot anymore unless um, obviously I'm using my um, my actual drive my pedal drive but you know this is obviously controls the uh, the rudder control back here but sometimes that'll get a little there'll be a lot of play in it and you just got to get in here and you just got to tighten these up a little bit once they're tightened up you got no play so yeah that's good my drop down rudder right there 
we are as good as we're going to get tomorrow. Not much of a pattern other than simply just the jackhammer. Um, and then getting into some wacky rigging. You know, using the old uh, Gary Yamamoto um, watermelon red wacky worm. The wind is horrible on this lake right now. Um, it was like that yesterday. It was miserable, as you saw. Like, as well, from what I told you, <laughs> you know, coming back and having to literally jump out of the kayak basically to keep it from uh, sinking. So that's fun. Anyways, all right. Um, let's go get something to eat, grab a few beers, go to a board check in, and then uh, just kind of relax for the rest of the day, rig up some rods, and then get ready for tomorrow here on Lake Norman. Not looking too good. <laughs> All right, bye. All right guys, day one of Hobie uh, on Lake Norman here in North Carolina. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna give it everything we got. Guess what, the wind's blowing already and we're pedaling, oh boy. It is a ticket. Oh no. Keeper of the day is a 14 incher. Fourteen and a half. What? What the hell happened? What was that? I thought it was hung up.
plus 16 and a half. Ooh. Okay. That's what we needed. Seventeen twenty five. Selfie. Let's see if there's another one over there. I don't know. It will not help. Bit bigger. There's a 15 incher. Oh 
Come on, man. one of day one and he doesn't call last one maybe of uh, day one in this whole tournament so let's see where we're at if I'm above 50 I'll stay I'm 51. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys. So looking back through the footage, I realized I didn't have an outro for day one. And so this is it. And that's partly because I was busy, you know, rigging up rods for the next day. People were talking to me and simply it was tough fishing and I just didn't feel like filming. So anyways, this is it. Uh, day one, that's in the books. I'm here to tell you that, you know, and this is a pattern for me that there was a huge warming trend the week before I get there. And then the day I get there, the bottom drops out, barometric pressure drops. You get a low pressure system that sets in that whole week that I was there throughout the whole weekend. And the bass just get so locked jawed up and you can't get a hold of anything on bigger baits. Now, granted, I threw the jackhammer a lot. I did get a hold of a couple decent ones, but they were too far and few in between. So I couldn't rely that for my tournament bait. And so, of course, I still threw it just hoping that maybe the next day it finally picked back up. But that morning was cold and it was miserable. And, of course, those fish did not want to eat. That barometric pressure drops. I mean, I'm here to tell you, if you guys are normally a power fisherman and you're throwing your jackhammers, your big deep diving crankbaits, you know, and, and you're using these power fishing techniques, put them away when that happens because you're going to save yourself a lot of time and headache. I'm there about, I want to put fish in the boat. I want, you know, it doesn't matter if they're small. I just want to put fish in the boat. I want to know that they're there eating. And granted, if the smaller fish are going to eat it, the bigger fish are going to eat it. You just got to kind of wade through them all. That's the bad part of finesse fishing. And as you saw, guys, the drop shot was what I was using because, I mean, honestly, I couldn't think of a better technique to pick apart a dock on a finesse application. Of course, I can get in there and probably throw a net or a shaky head and things like that. And yeah, that would work. But for people who don't fish a lot of docks, there's so many little nooks and crannies down there you don't see and I just did not want to get hung up. I'd rather lose a sinker on my drop shot than the actual whole hook or leader. So um, picked apart those docks with the drop shot. This is my drop shot setup. It's a Daiwa Tatula 7 foot 1. It's their drop shot technique specific rod from Daiwa. It's a light or it's a um, medium light fast action rod and I was using 20 pound 131 suffix braid probably the most rounded braid you'll ever use smooth um and the reason why i went you know i had a heavier braid on there is because number one that that braid's amazing the casting distance is incredible number two the knots match up a little bit better to the diameter of your leader so the diameter of your braid and diameter of the leader when they match up a little bit more make a tighter knot for me personally that's just what it seems to be so that's why i like using 20 pound um 131 braid then of course i've got a 13 foot anywhere from 13 to 15 foot uh, liter, and a fluorocarbon, advanced uh, suffix, advanced fluorocarbon, eight pound test, and then just using a small drop shot uh, hook and weight, and probably about a foot difference, you know, from the weight to the hook. Uh, the bait is 100% 
what was working down there for me it wasn't the actual technique it was the color and it was the bait itself guys this is the zoom finesse worm and the color is red bug guys that right there is a must have for any uh pre-fishing and spawning or at least you know during uh spawn uh, type of bait and man there are times that I've rolled up to a bed where I know the bass have seen me they've been fished a lot but I've thrown this drop shot in or even just a weightless on this guy right here look at this color here this red bug um, has this bluish flake in it and a red in it man and they just they hate that color they really hate that color and I've caught a lot of fish off of beds utilizing this color here. So if you guys really want to have a good time on Lake Norman, get yourself uh, some uh, finesse red bug worms from Zoom and rig it up on a drop shot rod, wacky rigging. Do a wacky rig because they are going to, they're going to, they're going to pick at the ends of these things. Okay. So give them an opportunity to really get a hold of that hook versus nose hooking it. Okay. So um, that was day one guys, drop shotting, picking apart these docks, I'm here to tell you too, when you're fishing them, don't just go to a dock and throw on one or two of those posts and think that there's no fish. There's been times where I threw on the fifth post, then on the third post, no fish, and then I threw it on the fourth post and was able to pull up a bass. Those bass were really isolated to that cover. When that, when that front came in, they just, they hugged as tight as they could. They weren't really moving. And then they were also sort of in a funky pattern too, because a lot of these bass were really had the mindset of getting up and starting to create beds. And whenever they're creating beds, they're not chasing bait. They're not eating anything. They're just focused on creating beds. So it was uh, a bit of a difficult time for me. But again, I was still able to make it happen with the Zoom Finesse Red Bug Worm Wacky Rigged Drop Shotted. Okay, so give that a shot, guys, if you're on Lake Norman. That's day one. I'm going to sign off here, guys. Um, hopefully, get out on the water, get yacked. Thanks for watching. Straight yak. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button down below, man. It helps me out a ton, guys. Thank you again for watching and subscribing to the channel, guys. Love you. Take it easy. Get on the water, get yak.